This is our 36 foot floating home sunshine. Join us as we go sailing. Sales up because our main sales is no good, not good, too much, too much patches. So replace try cells and hit cells and T cells that we use for today or this time because we haven't the main cells. So we replace it by using the try cells. because our main cells is cannot be used because too much store too much patches so be you know what it hello folks you want to know what it's really like sailing in the wild and the crazy I can't believe this State. 25 knots. Well, I gave it a shot anyway. Really hard to hold on and uh, run the camera at the same time. You saw my uh, bright orange tri sale. It was virtually brand new. I bought it before I left Florida specifically for this boat. Uh, it was sold as a used sale, although it was uh, brand new. I don't think it ever been used. It's sure getting to work out on this trip though because I've been using it exclusively since the main sale blew out. Anyway, this is another one of these feisty squalls. I don't know if it's a squall or a storm. Just almost every day, constant. Uh, every couple hours or so, one of these things will blow through. Some of them get pretty strong. We had one the other after, yesterday afternoon, I think it was. Must have been blowing 50 knots lasted for much longer than the normal 15 or 20 minutes fall. That one uh, beginning to end was a couple hours. And uh, it was a bit of a wild ride. We were screaming along, probably making eight knots. Uh, fortunately, the squall, the wind has been giving us a lift on our course line. And I have been able to, slowly but surely, work my way towards my course line up to Ho Chin. I'd still like to get to the west of it. Right now, uh, even with the strong wind, I gotta say our progress has not been as good as I had hoped. Because often we're sailing as, once again, as close to the wind as possible, trying to hold on to our course line. And with this sea state, and uh, probably sailing 50 to 60 degrees off the true wind with a tri sail in the Yankee and a stay sail if the conditions warrant it's light enough to do that but with the boat pounding away into these uh, seas even though mostly they're on the beam it makes it difficult to keep the boat speed up 
I think the first 30 hours from the time I decided to go north was sometime late in the afternoon and until uh, I think what somewhere around sundown the next day I was later than sundown nine o'clock at night would have been about 30 hours I think we made 80 miles in 30 hours pretty slow progress but that was strictly under the stay sail I had put up the tri-sail yet. So, now that we've got the tri-sail up, it's working out pretty well. But even considering the conditions right now, we're maybe making three knots. 25 knots of wind, we're going three knots. Because i got to hold the bow up closer to the wind. You can't ease the sheets and sail off far to the east. I mean, if the wind shifted to southwest, which is where it's supposed to be blowing from, we would be flying along. But since I'm close reaching, we're crawling. Anyway, I don't know, I think it's Thursday morning, about 9 o'clock or something. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but the wind is howling through the rigging, for sure. It hasn't gotten quite up to the screaming level, which is a bit spooky, because that usually means 50 knots of wind. Anyway, bye for now. I'm telling you folks, look at this absolute washing machine out here. holding the camera inside because I don't want the wind noise on the microphone. Uh -huh. A little splashy trying to jump in the cockpit with us. doesn't always pick it up, but when the tops of those waves start cresting over and the sunlight shines through it and it appears a bottle green, they're called greenies, not too surprising, and that means at least 25 knots of wind. I would say right now it's probably a lot more like 30. Folks, I made a little mistake in those earlier videos. I thought it was about 9 o'clock ship's time. It was actually a little bit after 7. Now, it's just about 10 a.m. And if anything, the wind has increased again. I would say we're in gale force. Gale force winds, 35 knots, steady. And the rain is pretty steady also. Not super heavy, but it is a constant rain. You can see the sky out there is white haze. Well, that's the rain coming down. And through the morning it is constantly increased slightly up to this now where it's, uh, I would call this again. 
gale. Not a whole gale. Whole gale is 45 knots. This is 35. So it's still pretty manageable. We're getting a fair amount of rolling from the waves, obviously. We've got just the tri sail up. I took the Yankee down some time ago. And uh, we're still just bopping along, more or less, on our course line, I think. But still not going all that fast. Three and a half knots, maybe. Something like that. Just the same thing. We've got to hold the boat up to the wind as much as possible to stay on the course line. And the wind is howling through the rigging because of its speed. And of course having the dinghy back there on the fourth quarter acts like a big sail. Which uh, helps uh, push the stern of the boat away from the wind, thereby giving a, sort of a false weather helm in conditions like this where the wind is towards the beam. We're still close reaching a little bit. Interestingly enough, ever since we decided to head north, I haven't been using the wind vane or the autopilot. I actually got the wheel lashed. I'm now about one and three quarter spokes of weather helm. And uh, that's holding a pretty steady course. The boat doesn't fall off, it doesn't round up. I sometimes have to add a little bit more as the wind has increased. I went from a, about a spoke earlier today to a spoke and a half, and now I'm up to a spoke and three quarters to keep the boat on course. So. I don't know what, this is obviously a storm, but it's not a circular storm, because the wind is constantly blowing from the same direction. So almost certainly some kind of a low pressure somewhere generating all this wind. I'm just hoping that it eases off enough as we get further north because we're going to have to go through that shipping channel again where the ships come around uh, or go around the south end of Sri Lanka as they're heading east and west. Uh, before I was hoping we would get through that shipping lane on the first day but it took until pretty much the end of the second day including the first day to get through the shipping lane because the ship spread out a bit to the north and south, those that are going east and west. So I would definitely prefer not to have to go through that shipping lane in conditions like this. So it's uh, Thursday, the 4th of May, 10 o'clock in the morning approximately, ship's time. Although we're going to have to ship back to uh, India time, which is that weird half hour off. Central Indian time is a half hour. It's between the two time zones. Between uh, five and six hours ahead of GMT. So it's five and a half hours ahead of GMT in Central India time. Bye for now.